Hello. There was a significant revival in handcrafted metalwork in the 20th century, a result of the arts and crafts movement, and it was enjoying something of a golden age in the early 20th century, when sinuous, elongated, Art Nouveau lines began to give way to more sharply angled and stylized Art Deco motifs. At the same time, advances in production techniques enabled intricate, fashionable, small-scale items such as cocktail sets and cigarette lighters to be mass-produced and therefore made much more affordable. Architectural metalwork included grills and balustrades, railings, light fittings, fireplaces, screens and lift cages, which are often the focal point in building lobbies. This is the lift lobby in the Chrysler building. And this is a lift lobby in the Guardian building in Griswold Street, Detroit. It was a headquarters of the Union Trust Company. Now the outstanding French ironsmith of the period was Edgar Brandt. He had two studios, one in Paris and one in New York. And he was responsible for the iron work on 181 Madison Avenue, New York. And this building was designated a New York landmark in 2011 because of the ironwork, including these wonderful intricate door panels. He had his own stand at the Paris International Exposition of 1925 and among his exhibits with this gilded wrought iron five panel screen. It's called the Oasis. We saw his lift cage for Selfridges in part one of this series. It's now in the Museum of London. Stylized cranes circling the sun and geometric figures in lacquered metal on a wooden background. This was another of Brandt's exhibits at the 1925 Paris show. He also had works dotted around the whole of the exhibition site, including the imposing main entrance gates. And he undertook a number of prestigious commissions for ocean liners and large houses, ambitious work in wrought iron and bronze, often enriched with gilt. But he also worked in steel and aluminium. If you have a look at some of his designs, this is a gate, wrought iron fire screen. This cobra pedestal is gilt bronze with wrought iron and marble. He quite likes snakes. This is a cobra lamp, a serpent vase, and a charger with serpent handles. This console is in wrought iron with a marble top. And this clock is silvered bronze and marble. Jeanne de Nand was Swiss, opened a studio in Paris also exhibited at the 1925 Paris Exhibition, designed some stunning lacquered furniture like this bed inlaid with mother of pearl, but he is best known for his lacquered metalwork, including cocktail cabinets. He is credited with the invention of coquille d'oeuf or eggshell, a dramatic white lacquer finish. This metal vase is inlaid with coquille d'oeuf. I can show you a couple more examples of his metal vases. He also produced lacquered metal and leather covers for special editions of books. Now the Maison Dany Company was established on the Champs Elysees in 1927, soon attracted a very select clientele, but they're only in business for a little over 10 years and they produced furniture and light fittings for offices and private houses. This cocktail cabinet, veneered sycamore with chrome mounts. But they're best known for their small functional household objects. It's like, like this letter rack and table lamps, some with tinted glass, others silver or nickel plated. And their style is progressive crisp, almost industrial shapes. This desk tidy is nickel plated and this cocktail set with a shaker, 12 goblets and tray. Jean Puyfouca 
exhibited the 1925 Paris Exhibition, worked with more traditional methods, hand metalworking techniques, planishing and hammering, not mass production. So work by Jean Puyfouquet is expensive. This is his constellation clock. Much of his work from the 1930s is based on curves. His earlier designs, like this clock from 1927, favour straight lines. And in that way, he's reflecting what happens in Art Deco generally, that initially very geometric, sharp lines gradually become more curvaceous and streamlined. This is Jean Puyfouquet's tea service with a samovar in silver and rosewood. Henry George Murphy, a London-based silversmith, heavily influenced by the arts and crafts movement, he taught at the Royal College of Art and the Central School of Arts and Crafts, opened his own Falcon studio and adopted Art Deco style in the mid-1920s. This is his toast rack, a silver box, teapot and cream jug. Now we met Keith Murray when we looked at ceramics and when we looked at glass. He also did designs for mapping and web and this is one of his, a cocktail shaker from 1930. George Jensen, Danish, trained initially as a goldsmith, then studied sculpture and set up his own company in Copenhagen in 1904, still in business. Employed a number of designers, but arguably the best known name was Harold Nielsen. And his designs are typically very sleek, bold and muscular, pared down, very stylish. Of a tray, cocktail shaker and candlesticks. Here in the UK and in the US, there's more conservative adoption of Art Deco. The Danish-born Eric Magnusson was employed by Gorham Manufacturing Company of Providence, Rhode Island, and he designed this cubic coffee service, inspired by the skyscrapers of Manhattan. And those faceted surfaces and contrasting planes create this interesting interplay of light cocktail shaker and glasses and what I think is a rather fun dish for nuts. They fetch good prices now. At the time Gorham could hardly give them away and lots were sold at a loss below production cost. Now many designers of small domestic metal items also worked with jewellery and crossover accessories such as cigarette cases and lighters and watches and powder compacts and that will be my theme for the next video. If you've enjoyed this video hit the like and subscribe buttons and click on the notification bell to be informed when the next video is available or you can subscribe by clicking on the rose window over my shoulder.